In this video, we're going to look at what a weak acid is and how we can start to deal with weak acids in terms of equilibrium. So it's going to turn out that with this entire weak acid chapter, um, we're going to be following the same exact pattern as we followed with equilibrium. The first thing we're going to do in this video, this is going to be completely analogous to the first few videos where we introduced the equilibrium constant. So we're going to be looking at acid and base reactions of weak acids in terms of their equilibrium uh, equation and their equilibrium constant. So you can kind of look back to those videos in chapter 14 to get a refresher on what we're talking about. So, but let's refresh our memory as to what defines a weak acid a weak acid. And that is that the acid strength of a weak acid is less than H3O plus, but is greater than water. So when we put that into, when we put this into solution, what's going to happen is, so when we take an HA, and an HA is just a general, a general sort of, um, placeholder for any weak acid. Um, it's basically the acidic proton attached to some anion, which is going to be the, which is going to be basically the acid. So for example, like HCN, the CN would be the A and the H would be the acidic proton or acetic acid, CH3COOH. The CH3COO minus would be the A and then the acidic H would be the, the H of the HA. And so when we put it in water, because the acid strength is greater than water, we're going to make some H3O plus aqueous, and we're going to make some A minus aqueous. But because this is less strong than H3O plus, that H3O plus can push back against it and form an equilibrium. So in essence, we have uh, the we have two acids, we have HA and H3O plus, and we're in a balancing act because um, because HA is less strong than the H3O plus, that H3O plus pushes back and we're in an equilibrium um, where we have two acids sort of competing with each other. And depending on how strong the acid is relative to H3O plus, we'll kind of determine how much H3O plus we get in solution because of the, that pushing, that balancing between the pushing of the HA and the pushing of the H3O plus. If it's a very weak acid, it's not going to push very hard against the H3O plus and we're not going to wind up with very much H3O plus in solution. So that's what we get for an equilibrium. Now, an important thing to remember is, is that the concentration of H3O plus in this case will not equal the concentration of HA. So this is not a strong acid, right? In a, with a strong acid, we get 100% products because there's nothing to push, push back against a strong acid. Strong acids are stronger than H3O plus and water, and therefore they can go to products and there's nothing to push back to, to stop them from doing that. So in this case, because we have this balance, only some of the HA is going to actually ionize, and we're going to get a mixture of HA, H3O+, and A- in water. So this is going to be an equilibrium mixture. And we can write what we call an equilibrium equation for this, where we get K, and if you, um, with the proper phase labels, I should have put proper phase labels in for everything, we can see that we're going to exclude the H2O because it's a pure li liquid, and so we're going to get H3O+, plus times the concentration of A minus. And then, and again, that's just a placeholder for the anion that's produced, the conjugate base of the weak acid. And we're going to get the concentration of HA on the bottom. And this K gets a special K. It's called the acid dissociation constant. So KA is equal to the acid dissociation constant. And it's equal to a measurement of how strong an acid is. So we remember back to um, we remember back to our understanding of K. When K is large, this favors products. When K is small, this favors reactants. So you could see how the value of K is going to be very important here in determining how strong of an acid it is. Since we measure acid strength in terms of the concentration of H3O+, that is the pH, right? When we think about acid strength, we're thinking about solution pH. The larger K is, the more H3O+, we're going to get, and therefore the stronger acid it is. So that's the link between Ka and H3O+. It's basically just a measurement of how much this um, HA will ionize into to make H3O+, plus, which is the acid in solution. Okay, so now let's take a look at some examples here for writing KAs. 
Okay, so on this slide, we just have some examples of um, we, we have some examples of, of weak acids, and we're going to write their reactions. So in this case, we have nitrous acid, which is HNO2. And so if we wanted to write the reaction of HNO2 with water, we're going to form H3O plus on the other side because the HNO2 is going to act as, an electro, as a uh, proton donor. And we're going to wind up with NO2 minus aqueous. And so the NO2 minus in this case is the same thing as A minus. It's the same concept. So if we wanted to write Ka for this, we would get the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of NO2 minus over the concentration of HNO2. And we get a value for Ka here. Okay, and so the next one is HCN. And so we're going to have HCN aqueous plus H2O liquid goes back and forth with H3O plus aqueous plus CN minus aqueous. And so our Ka in this case is going to be, and you'll see a pattern start to emerge here, um, which is why we are showing you this, because the pattern is the same for every single one. So we get H3O over A minus divided by HA. So now let's look at the second part. It says order the acid from strongest to weakest. So we have one that's uh, 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4, uh, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5, and 4.9 times 10 to the minus 10. So what these values of Ka are telling you is how much of the um, acid is going to break up and go to products, right? And the products have the H3O plus in it, which is what we measure the acid strength of a solution as. So in this case, large Ka's, the larger the Ka, the more strong the acid is going to be. So in this case, we're going to get HNO2 is the strongest because it has the largest Ka, followed by acetic acid, followed by HCN based on those Ka's. And so when you look at the table that we were working with in chapter 15 for acid strength, underneath that table are these values of Ka. So as you go up in acid strength, what's happening is, is you're increasing value of Ka uh, as you go up that table. So this gives you an introduction to uh, the equilibrium constant. And now we're going to start to work some problems um, as we go about um, working these equilibrium problems, just like we did in chapter 14. We're going to start to assign problem types and work through them as though they were, as though they were equilibrium problems.